Hi there and welcome to another video on Django and HTMX. We're going to extend what we did in the last video and fix our views and we're going to add the HTMX based drag and drop functionality that integrates with the database and allows the order of a user's film list to be persisted into the database and dynamically updated on the front end by drag and drop and using HTMX and the sortable library. So let's get started and dive into the code. So in the last section we added some drag and drop sortable JS functionality that allows us to drag films to different positions in our list. And we also added some new model attributes. We added a new model that encompassed the many to many relationship between users and films. And we have a new bit of data in that table and that's the order. So for every user, they have a list and the films within the list have an order. But we've seen that that actually breaks the front end because now certain things are just not working because they're not built to deal with the many-to-many -many field having an order column as you can see down here. So let's get to work by starting to fix that now. So if we cross to views.py, I'm going to do some work in this file to try and fix some of the endpoints. What we're going to do is from the models, we're going to import our new user and it's going to be called user films. That's the model that we just created in the last section. Now with that, we're going to change a few of the views. Now, firstly, we've got this film list view. By default, the film list is returning user.films.all. We're gonna change that and we're gonna return the many to many field instead. So let's cross that out there. Actually, we're gonna get rid of all of that. So we're gonna return from the get query set method. We're gonna return user films dot objects dot filter. And we'll get all user films where the user is equal to self dot request dot user. Now, remember in our new many-to-many -many model, we have a foreign key to the user table. That's what we reference here, userfilms.objects.filter. We only want to get the logged in users list of films. So that's the first change we're going to make. The second change is in the add film function. This is what's called when we add a film to our list from the input box or from the search results. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change this line and we're going to add a new line here, which is going to be userfilms dot objects dot create and the film is going to be equal to the film here that we got from the database the user is going to be equal to the request dot user and what we're going to do is we need to also this is the problem that we were getting in the front end here remember that we weren't setting the order so we need to actually do that when we create this user film instance we also need to set the order so what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if a given film exists with these attributes so i'm going to do an if statement here and we'll change objects.create to objects.filter. If a user film instance exists with this film and that user, if that exists, or rather if that does not exist, so I'm gonna put a not here. If we don't have a film for that user with this name, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create that. And we can pass in uh, an order here. And by, for now, we're just gonna default that to one. But what we actually want to do is create a function that will um, generate the new order for us. We'll come back to that later on. What we're also going to do is we're going to change this line here, which gets the films, and we're going to put that equal to userfilms.objects.filter. And again, we're going to get the films that belong to the current user. So we're changing the structure of what's been returned here from film objects up here to user film objects. And that's going to come with some consequences for the templates as well. We'll get to that in a minute. Here we're removing the primary key that's passed up. So I'm going to change that to userfilms.objects.get. We're going to get the primary key that's passed in the URL and then we're going to call delete on that instance. That will remove that film uh, user combination from the database. And finally, again, we're going to copy this to render all of the films using userfilms.objects.filter filtering down by the user's films. And finally, the search film endpoint is also going to change. Again, we change this statement here to the filter statement. And what we also need to do is this is now a list of user film objects. So what we now need to do is we need to actually link the film to its name. As you can see here, what it's doing is for each user film, it's going to look for a name column, but that doesn't exist in our new model. It did exist before in the film model, but now we're going to have to follow the foreign key from film to get the name. So how do we do that in Django? Well, we specify the field, which is film, and then two underscores. That means follow this foreign key and look for a name field. So we get the film, 
we follow the form key to the film object and we get the name from that. So that's what we need to do there. And I think that should do it. Uh, it's still not going to work completely properly here. But if we search and try and add a, an object, we're going to get a new error here. If I scroll to the bottom, again, it's the not null constraint because we didn't actually set an order up here, I don't think. If we go to add film and we set order equals one. So what we need to do now is change the way the order is actually generated. So we're going to do that next. But before we do that, we're also going to have to change some of the template code. Now, if you look at the film list, we're iterating over the films that are passed in. This used to be film objects that had a name attribute, but now it's user film instances. So for each film, we're going to change how we get the name. We're going to have to follow the form key, film.film.name. That's a bit confusing, but what it means is we have instances of the user films, which have a film attribute that we follow to get the name. So that's how we do that. And we also, um, we're passing to the delete film instance, the primary key that can remain the same because the delete film instance now deletes the user film object. So we just pass the primary key there. What we're also going to do now is generate a utility module. So within the films folder, I'm going to create a utils.py. And within here, we're going to create a function that allows us to generate a new order when a user adds a model to the list. So currently, if a user was to add a model, a film, they need to have an order that is basically at the end. So if there was already five films in the user's list, the next one has to be order number six. So let's see how we do that now. I'm going to create a function here and I'm going to copy paste the code in. And if I paste that code in here, just move that down. So we're importing the new model user films and we're also importing a function called max from Django's models module. So what we're going to do, this is going to take a user, it's going to find all of the users existing films in their list. If there are none, we'll just return one because the order should be one. Um, if, they are, if the user's adding their first movie, it should be of uh, order one. But if films do exist in the database, what we're going to do is we're going to get the current maximum using Django's aggregation utilities. And we're going to use the max function to go through the existing films of the user, find the maximum order that they have, and we'll return the maximum plus one to get the new maximum. So what we're going to do is we're going to import this in the views.py file. So if I go to the top and we will say from films.utils import and what was the name of this function? Get max order. And now within our, uh, within our code here when we're creating a user films object, we can actually just call the get max order function and pass in request.user. And let's make this a bit more readable by breaking it into the multiple lines. So we're creating a user films object if one doesn't exist with the given film and the given user. And we're passing a new order, which will be the current maximum plus one. And we also need to remove this line here where it's trying to add the film. Let's try removing that. And now we will save this and we'll try reloading the page. If we search for some objects, we now get this message displayed here and you can see that the message disappears as it did before. So we're now able to add films to the list. Can we delete them? Yes, we can. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually hook up HTMX. If I go to the film list, we're trying to send a post request to an endpoint that doesn't exist. So if you look at the network tab in the, in the browser, um, let's go to the network tab. When I add a film here, let's just add a few films. We'll add another one. And if I try and drag this around, you'll see that this is HTMX, trying to send a post request, but we haven't actually created this endpoint. So what I'm going to do is go to urls.py. Uh, first of all, let's give this a name. So we'll use the URL template tag and we'll call the view, uh, we'll call the URL sort. So we're going to create that now in urls.py. So within here, I'm just going to paste this code. And you can see that the endpoint is just sort. I'll add a slash to that. And we're going to now create the view sort that's going to take care of handling this for us. So at the bottom of the views.py, we'll create a sort view, which takes the request. And what we're going to do is we need to accept um, data from sortable JS. So for now, I'm going to pass. And if we look at the data that was sent, we're going to see down at the bottom here of the network tab, we're going to see that the form data comes into the server and it has an order of movies. Now these are actually the primary keys of the user film instances. So if I change this order, 
you should see 4 and 3 becomes 3 and 4 at the bottom because the primary keys have been switched. So what, what this is actually doing is from top to bottom, it will send in order the primary keys of the user film instances. And the reason it's doing that is because in our little hidden field here, this value is what we specify um, as the value that's sent to the server. And it's the primary key of the user film instance that we're iterating over. So we're now going to accept this on the server. So let's see how to do that now. In the views.py file, we've got this sort function. Now I'm going to paste this in here. The Because we're doing an htmx post request, we use the request.post attribute and we're using get list to get the attribute in the post request data of the key film order. And that corresponds to the name that we're given this hidden input. So we get the film order and if we print that out in the back end, we should be able to see it on the terminal. And what we're going to do next is we're going to set up an empty list called films and this is going to be what's returned by the view here and what we'll do for now is we'll just return an HTTP response with an empty string so we can actually view what's sent to the server here so let me add another film to my list again this is not a, a CSS tutorial so this is certainly not a responsive website but um, what we're going to do now is we're going to rearrange the contents here you see that it disappears because um, HTMX is now swapping an empty string into the content we'll fix that in a minute but at the bottom here, um, we send the request. Now we've got this particular film order. If we look at the terminal, you see the order coming in as um, a list of stringified numbers, essentially. So what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over those and set the order appropriately. Let's see how to do that now. So I'm going to create a for loop here, and it's going to iterate over all of the films in our um, list. So for film primary key, and, and this is going to be in that film primary keys order that we've got. So for each one of these numbers, we're going to store that in a film primary key variable as we iterate over. What we're going to do is we're going to get the user film, and that's going to be equal to user films dot objects dot get, and the primary key equal to the film primary key there. The film primary key, um, remember that's the user films primary key here, and we're going to now fetch that based on what's passed to the server in the order that it's um, actually on the front end. So when we get that, what we can do is we need to set the user film order. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that to the index of iteration uh, starting from one. So there's an easy way to do that in Python. I'm gonna create a variable called index here and we'll use the enumerate function that's built into Python, that's a built in. And we start at one. So we're not starting at zero as we normally do because the order should really start from one so for index in the film's primary key and enumerate film primary keys order, we're going to set the order to that index. So in the first iteration, it's going to be one. Second iteration will be two. And that will match what's being sent here as we drag and drop these contents. We're going to change what's being sent, the order. And in this case, the primary key five will be first in the list. We've dragged that to the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to fetch that and set its order to one because it's the first primary key that comes in. I hope that makes sense. It's worth uh, working through this yourself to see how it works. Once we've got that, we're going to call the models save method to persist it to the database. And we're going to append the changed model to this empty films list that we set up up here. And if we remove the print statement, I'm now going to return um, the film list partial I'm just going to copy that and we've got a films context variable that we're going to set and make it equal to a films list. So I'll replace the HTTP response with this and that will now swap this into the HX target which we set to be the film list which is remember from earlier tutorials the film list is basically that encloses this entire partial here. So that will swap that in. Now we're going to see how that looks on the front end. Hopefully this will work. So now I'm going to add another film, let's say The Godfather. And if I rearrange these contents, we now see that we're getting a response and things are not disappearing. Let's now add an indicator here to see what the actual order is. This will make it a bit more clear, I think. So if we go to the template film list, here we're, we're displaying the film's name. What I want to do is actually display the film's order as well. So I'm going to paste that in there. Remember, these user film instances, they have this order attribute. 
So that should now show us the order of the films. And you can see number one, Escape from New York. Two is Godfather. If we drag and drop, you see that actually now dynamically changes because when we finish the drag and drop action, that's an HX trigger of the sortable end. And that will then send a request to this view with the new ordering, and which we then iterate over and reset the order element or the order attribute on the user films models. So once that's done, we save the models and we return the rendered partial and it updates the field dynamically. So this is all working quite well now. Um, we can rearrange contents and it will dynamically update. If we move Godfather to number four, it changes to number four. There is one problem. If we remove an item, you see that we are actually missing number two here. So what we want to do is when we actually delete an item from this, we want to reorder the existing elements. So what I'm going to do is within our utilities, I'm going to create a new function called reorder to do this. So let's write a function reorder. And this is going to take the user in as well. And I'm, again, I'm going to get the user's existing films. And what we're going to do now is if no films exist, if not existing films dot exists, we're just going to return nothing. We don't want to do anything. We don't need to do any reordering if the user doesn't have any films. But what I now want to do is say number of films. Let's get the number of films the user has. And that's going to be existing films dot count. And with the number, we can now uh, generate a new ordering based on what's passed in there. So the new ordering is just going to be a range statement in Python. And it's going to go from one to the number of films plus one. So this is just a range from one up until the, the number of movies that are in the database for that user. Finally, what we want to do is look over these films in the user's list. Remember, they are by default ordered by the ordering field, so we'll get them in the, the correct order. We now want to reset the order attribute from one to the number of films in the user's list. So if the user had six films in the list and we deleted one of them, we would then have five. There would be a, a number that has been removed and we now want to reorder the films from one to five. So let's get back to our utilities file. What we need to do is loop over the existing films. So for, uh, let's say for user film and existing films. And what we need to do is set user film dot order. And we're going to set that to one of the new orderings. Now, again, we can use enumerate here. Um, I've actually got this new ordering, so let's actually use another Python built in. Let's use zip. So we're going to zip the new ordering and the existing films. Um, so new ordering is just one to the length of the num uh, number of films in the list and the user's film, we're going to set that. So user film dot order equals order. And then finally, of course, we need to save the model userfilm.save and that should do the trick. We now refresh the page. Obviously it's broken at the moment, but if I try and change this, you see that it actually correctly updates the index or the order here. And let's add a bunch more random films. You can see it's got the correct uh, order. It gets the maximum plus one. And finally, if we move Pulp Fiction to number two, you should see that that gets the order two. So we actually maintain the order. When we ref refresh this page, Pulp Fiction is still number two. And if we delete Pulp Fiction, you should see that all the films below it have their orders increased by one. But that actually didn't happen because I've not called my utility function anywhere. So let me just do that now. Within the views.py, we need to import from utils a reorder function. And this is called when we delete a film. So after we delete the instance, we will call reorder and we need to pass in the request user. So hopefully that will do the trick now. Um, if we refresh the page, let's reorder again. That will fix the, um, the orders there. If we remove Mulholland Drive, we should now see that the orders maintained. We don't have that missing gap between the films. So this has been quite a dense video. It's sometimes hard to explain some of this stuff, but I hope you've gotten something from it. And I think this final utility here is, is quite cool where you can drag and drop uh, these films and it will dynamically update the database based on where you drop them. The sortable library is used for this along with HTMX. So I think this is a very nice and easy technology stack and very impressed with HTMX and I'm looking forward to making more videos. So do 
like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. Um, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.